Hello, and welcome to my first My Summer Car video. Um, today, as the title suggests, I'm going to be running through some very, very basic bare-bones Satsuma maintenance. Pretty much stuff you want to check um, pretty much every time you take the car out. Uh, eventually you'll get to learn the car better and learn exactly when you should be checking up on certain things. Um, sorry about the audio, I did have to cut the audio out, uh, so there's not going to be any game audio in this video. Look at that hitting a cigarette while drinking water, that's, that's pretty impressive. First, obviously, run around and take care of all your needs. Uh, I usually wouldn't say that, but it is important. Uh, for this video because you do not want to fulfill your need to urinate. Do not do that yet. We are going to urinate at a very crucial time. Um, another thing, obviously, if you don't have your Satsuma built yet, this is not going to be the video for you. Uh, unfortunately, it's a very complicated, arduous, and long process. I will be making a video about that in the future. In the meantime, there are some very excellent walkthroughs out there. My favorite, the one that I used, is the Electric Boogaloo one uh, that can be found on the Fandom Wikia page. And it does include some uh, advanced maintenance stuff that you can kind of get around having to keep up with. Uh, if you build the car properly in the first place, like wheel alignment and stuff, um, if you put it together properly right, you won't actually have to align them. They'll just be aligned correctly. Although you can screw that up later with some heavy collisions and stuff. Um, but anyway, okay, we're going to get started here. I like to keep my uh, socket set in the car. definitely recommend getting a ratchet set, uh, mostly for building the car. So, again... If you've already done that, it might be too late, but it's definitely worth it. Um, it's still worth it. Oh, gee, look at this. It's still worth it later on, um, even after you get the car built. I like to keep it with me just in case something goes wrong on the road. Um, after you get it, the, the spanner set that you start with is pretty much useless. It's not entirely useless because there are certain parts that you cannot adjust with the ratchet set. You have to use the spanner set. And um, having an extra screwdriver to carry around with you without having to sacrifice your... Uh, oh, that, that's always fun. Your ratchet set. Uh, that's, that's always good too. So, the very first thing I like to do is start charging the battery, because that takes a while. So now you want to take the terminal closest to the cab. Uh, you want that terminal to always be uh, connected. So you want to disconnect that one last and reconnect it first. And then you can come over here and you should get a prompt while you're holding it to connect it. It'll automatically connect and it need, looks like it needs to be charged. So it charges right to left. It actually uh, the meter shows you how much output the the charger is outputting, how much charge the output is charging, not how much charge is in the battery. I do recommend getting uh, one of the replacement batteries from T's shop yeah, that's my fancy radiator that I'm not allowed to have in my damn car. The uh, starting batteries kind of suck. So that's going to take a little bit to charge up for me there. Um, yeah. You need to be you need to be able to get into the engine bay for the next part. So I kind of fucked up here. I'm going to move around a little bit. That's right. Forgot that I took the battery out. Okay. So... Okay, so now that we can get into the engine bay... 
you're going to want to take your screwdriver you're going to want to find all your radiator hoses I believe there's four of them and they each have two screws uh, there might only be three of them actually I don't... there's a second screw on that one and there's a second hose oh <laughs> I actually missed a screw there I think yeah okay so there's only three radiator hoses but there's two screws on each, so I just missed one there. Those will... Uh, I've heard that they'll untighten by themselves just over time. Um, I'm pretty sure that rough riding and collisions, things of that nature, will also cause them to unscrew quicker. I know there's, there, uh, there's an upgraded set of radiator hoses that you can get. I don't know exactly what they do. Maybe they just stay tighter for longer. Okay, so next you want to do the exact same thing, but with your brake and clutch line. Uh, you'll take a 7mm. I've heard that you cannot actually adjust these with the ratchet, and that you need to use the open-in box wrench uh, from the spanner set. I don't know. I ran through and tried it like this this time, and it seemed like it was going to let me do it. Uh, I didn't need to tighten anything up, so it didn't really matter. But basically, those are all the nuts you want to hit, and then there's a nut with the brake line on each wheel. There it is. Just follow it down to the nut. This one also did not need tightened usually. I just run... Um, all of the nuts inside the engine compartment and then I run out and check one of the wheels if one of the wheels doesn't need fixed I usually don't check the rest of them because that nut is a little bit difficult to find uh, one more kind of important thing that I wanted to mention is that I will be shooting all of these videos in a controlled environment uh, by that I just mean that the Satsuma is in peak condition so for the sake of demonstration nothing should be interfering Okay, so I just looked it up, and apparently you need the spanner. So I go back through, check them all again. None of them need a check again. But it's very important to keep an eye on the tightness of all of these lines. Um, if the lines start to loosen, you'll start to leak fluid. Uh, leaking brake and clutch fluid is obviously bad. Leaking uh, coolant out of your radiator is also bad. Uh, I'm definitely going to be covering issues like this in the future in more depth, uh, teach you how to diagnose them, what to do to fix them. So now that we've got all of our lines checked out and the batteries on the charger still, of course, we've got three fluid levels we need to check out. Our uh, rocker cover, which holds our oil, our radiator, which holds our coolant. Then we've got these three reservoirs over here for brake fluid and clutch fluid. Um, only two of them need to be filled. I believe one of the brick reservoirs fills into uh, feeds into the other one actually. So we're going to tackle the oil first because there's a couple different ways you can check your oil level actually. Uh, the dipstick is very cool. What the hell? Um, yeah, okay. So, not only does the dipstick show you the level, but the color of the dipstick, uh, the color of the oil, that nice dark beer color right there is what you want. That's, that's clean oil. And we can tell we're at about 75% there. So, we're going to put the dipstick back and top her off. Uh, I'm going to do a whole episode on oil and all the different things you need to do to keep your oil clean and how it affects your car. Okay, so we got the oil topped off. Next, I'm just going to grab a bottle of brake and clutch fluid. I've been advised that you should buy a ton of these when you start the game, because apparently you need a lot of it. So there, you see, I only filled up two of those reservoirs. And, uh, I believe one feeds into a different one. Okay, so I uh, mentioned before, put the cat back on here. Okay, it was fully tightened for a while there. 
I put these caps back on. I mentioned before that we wanted to save our urine. You are about to see why. Uh, we still need to put coolant in the radiator, right? Well, there we go. There's some coolant for the radiator. The game does not actually differentiate between urine and coolant, so it doesn't really matter. Um, you're not going to get less performance or damage your car or anything by using urine. It's, it's actually just free coolant. Okay, so we're done pissing. We're going to top her off. And at this point, I was starting to get pretty pissed off by the noises coming from this thing. So, come on, get, get over it. There we go. Get over there. I don't know how the hell that thing moved itself over there. Okay, so then, of course, one thing that I actually almost forgot about. Um, it's such a simple thing for this game compared to most of the concepts in the game just put some fuel in your car don't forget don't forget to do that and I'm not actually gonna fill it up all the way cuz it takes some time you know how to do it you know that a uh, car needs fuel to operate so and I'm only gonna be driving this thing down the road a little bit just to make sure it operates pretty much but that's that's it I mean that's that's like Basic bare bones maintenance. That it's probably about as charged as it's gonna get. I don't really know, but we're just gonna slap this back in there. And again, uh, you want to make sure this terminal closest to the cab is connected first. And it's kind of a shame you won't be able to hear it. I did a little demonstration here. Um, if you connect those in the wrong order, you'll start to hear some sparking. If you don't immediately disconnect or finish uh, connecting the battery, um, it will catch fire, which is not great for your car. That's the fuel mixture gauge. I will cover that deeper in a future episode as well. And uh, that's it. We are ready to roll. Oh, that was my fault. That was not any mechanical issue with the car. Because safety first, of course. Oh, yeah, of course. Taking, taking your eyes off the road. That's safety first. And there you have it. Just buttering along. Here's those extra gauges that I was talking about before. You can check your oil. Check your battery charge. Alright, that's about it. Though That's all I really wanted to cover in this episode. Um, there you have it. That's the basic maintenance for this Atsuma. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, and stay tuned. I'll, um, I'll definitely be posting a lot of these videos if you ever come across a problem or something that you just can't figure out. There's plenty of other, oh geez, there's plenty of other sources out there, of course, but, uh, yeah, hopefully I can do a good job of condensing these down, or at least describing them pretty well. So, stay tuned.